right, welcome everybody to episode eight of Teed Up with Connor and Patrick. This episode is sponsored by Hames Homes. Hames Homes provides comfort and beauty in homes in Eastern Iowa. Today we have Nicholas and Michael Bear, the brother duo. The Bear, the Bear is famous all around Iowa. That that much is confirmed. Everybody knows the Bears. We have Nicholas, former power forward, small forward, center, point guard, shooting guard of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Whatever you oh, need. I, whatever. He's a, he's called the utility guy. He's a Renaissance man. Is what he is. <laughs> <laughs> we got then we got Michael Bear, former pretty. I would say Michael, you're more of a three, four, five. Of an Iowa right, Hawk right. at your time at the at the yeah, Hawk. All right, yeah, now, that's fine. That's fine. now maybe a two, three, four, five for the Saints. Would you say for the CSA? I'll take it. Yeah, Swiss Army knife. I'll take that. A Swiss Army, yes, yeah. definitely yeah. A Swiss Army knife. I can um, rebound. Both, yeah. both great players in in their own right. Put, both played at Iowa from from the Dorf. I don't think anybody calls B Town. B Town, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Home of Raising Canes. I, we go there every time. We drive. Well, hey, hey, Raising Canes is technically in Davenport, so let's let's yeah uh, come yeah on. let's come, come on. on. We, okay. we have a Jimmy John. Let that fly, but yeah. it's a fine line. <laughs> come Jimmy on. John. We have a Jimmy John. And a, and a Whitey's. Michael's a huge ice cream guy. For everyone yeah. that doesn't know this, Michael. Loves Actually, it. I'm gonna say uh, Bent North known for the home of Happy Joe's Pizza and the birth of Taco Pizza. For you, you people Ooh. who love your taco pizza. Yep. Yeah. There's my point. Michael, you are very pizza. well read on the Bettendorf history here. You are you know, very I, well I read. I did grow up there. I you did. did. Yeah, Michael, did. Michael, we say, or Nicholas, I should say, Michael's the king of random facts. Is he not? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's like, a great memory. If you, the kid yeah. just knows things. So mm-hmm. you see, Connor, you were talking about Raising Cane's in Davenport, where uh, sliced bread was literally invent- invented in Davenport, Iowa, for a lot of the listeners on the pod who don't know that. So I <laughs> wanted to throw that out there. The kid's coming out with facts today. <laughs> Ash, whenever there's a question asked and somebody doesn't know, Ash would be like, oh, Michael would know. Like, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael knows. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Regardless of what the question is, he assumes that he assumes you know. But but if I don't know the random fact he's looking for, it's my fault. Oh, like, like, it's my, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. For that video, Ash sent us one time. He's like, Michael Bear is a good friend. Helps me my homework. <laughs> <laughs> good guy, good kid. Good the infamous, kid. the infamous Father Ed video. Yep, that's Father exactly Ed, right. Thanks for the juice. Yeah, didn't expect Dude. Father Ed to get a shout out so soon here. But uh, shout oh, out he was getting Michael. He was getting a shout. Out. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. We got it in the notes. All right. It was in the notes. Early um, enough, Father Ed will get shout out. <laughs> I do. Okay, I want to start with this, though. We t- we hit on Father Ed, but obviously he's he was pretty much a family member, correct? Like, very close. Very close. Mm-hmm. Um, near and dear to your guys' hearts. But I want to hit on, hit on family first. You're – obviously, you are all very, very close. All of your sisters, your mom, very close-knit. And growing up, you know, I – I've grown up in an environment with very strong, independent, opinionated women as well. And mm-hmm. you guys, have, you guys definitely yes, sir. do that. <laughs> you guys yeah. experience that as well. I mean, everyone <laughs> ultra smart, um, you know, personality for days. Just, just talk about what it was like growing up um, in the, in the close knit family that you have Nicholas to, to you first. Sure. Yeah. I mean, first off, it's tough to get a word in, you know, with everybody <laughs> kind of, you know, having a, having everybody's got to say about something, but, I mean, that's what makes it fun. I think the biggest thing was you know, my parents had five kids in six years. So one, that's in- insanity. Two, um, <laughs> also just made it a lot of fun growing up though. You know, I always kind of remember growing up, everybody's just real close in age and, you know, we're all good friends there, but um, yeah, I mean, I you know, always enjoyed, you know, my siblings, there's, um, you know, a lot of times too, where we'd get after it just like anybody else with any other big family. I think I learned a lot about how to, you know, handle certain situations, you know, develop interpersonal skills, all very important. Um, but yeah, I definitely loved uh, growing up and especially in Fed North and a house full of, uh, you know, a bunch of run- kids running around. So it was always a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Michael, what do you got? Yeah. I mean, I would just kind of echo that a little bit, um, you know, just kind of let everyone know who they are. You know, our mom, Joy Kelly, and then Elizabeth is the oldest, then Nicholas, then Catherine, then me, and then Caroline. And like Nicholas said, five kids in six years. And, uh, you know, I have, we have, Nicholas and I both have three sisters. So again, a lot, lot of women around. 
a um, lot, of, lot of stuff going on there. But, yeah, no, we definitely stayed very close growing up, and we're still very close now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, it's – you guys are – you guys are as close to knit of a family as I – you know, I've seen you guys are all, you know, hanging out all the time. You got and, – and you two especially, Michael and Nicholas, you guys – you guys share a share a pretty special bond. Um, so what you know, Michael? Why don't you why don't you talk about that a little bit? Um, just you know, you can, you kind of said at times like you know I, I followed Nicholas around. You know he was he was who I looked up to when it came to basketball, and I wanted to I wanted to do things like him. So why don't you hit on hit on that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I definitely was just kind of shadowing him around a whole lot of times, you know, growing up, um, he would have his basketball practices and I would, I, I was like in kindergarten, first grade, I didn't even have a team yet, but I would just go around to his practices and just always be there. And he easily could have been like, you know, like mom, like leave, leave Michael at home. The kid's just annoying. Like, <laughs> like, like just, just got, like, like what, what are we doing? Like the kid's just off on the side, like get, get him out. But uh, no, no, he, he let me be around. Uh, so that, that was very, very nice of him. And then uh, just kind of growing up, obviously, Nicholas's career throughout high school, he obviously had a great high school career and then went on to Iowa. And I was like, I mean, I'm in. I'd like to do that, too. I mean, <laughs> come on. So, I mean, it doesn't sound like a bad deal. So, um, yeah. And then once uh, he got to Iowa, um, he obviously played well and everything. And I kind of wanted to follow in that footsteps uh, that way, too. And then once I got there again, um, I was manager, walk on, whatever. And he, again, could have just ignored me most of the time I was there or whatever. But uh, no, he, he was great. And then uh, we had that one year we got to be on the same team. That was obviously awesome. And yeah, I'm just very thankful for him in that way. Yeah. Patrick, I think I think it's pretty easy to say that you just kind of shadowed me all the time, too. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, are you being are you being sarcastic? <laughs> <laughs> I've never shadowed anybody in my life. I, I just <laughs> he's, he's his own man. He's his own guy. I just hear about Patrick uh, in the superhero outfit. That's what everyone out here in Albany tells me about. Oh yeah, Patrick. He was like Spider Man, like whatever. I was like, that doesn't sound like Connor though. So, Michael, yeah. Michael, would you say that Patrick moves to the beat of his own drum? Would you say that? I I would say I say the kid, the kid is in his own world every now and then. <laughs> it, it's it's and uh and you know you love it. You love that about him. You know what you're getting. Yeah. Nicholas, is that a world that you would want to be in? I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, sometimes, I'm sure. You know, I'm sure there's moments there. Yeah, some no, good, there's bad. definitely moments. It's not, not something I even want to be in all the time, but you know. Where we are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, Michael, you – you brought up um, you brought up high school, so I guess I guess we'll touch on it just a little bit. Uh, wanted sure. to highlight at least a game. Um, oh my uh, god! Oh, careers, uh, we oh, had a dog. It. Uh, <laughs> it it I my, Nicholas, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think it was your senior year, my freshman year, and, and the fi- in the semifinals that dude, uh, he State knows he's tournament. not wrong. Don't let him do this. To yeah, you. yeah. Oh, I'm not wrong. sure. I'm really unsure oh, if this is accurate God. or not. I don't know. Did I win the State title my there. freshman year? Was that it? I don't is that know. the one? I don't know. It could What's this be. guy's deal? Aren't you hosting this pop? It could be. It could be. It could have been freshman. I. It, I, you know, I forget. I'm forgetful. Like, you know what they say? There'd be no way of knowing. <laughs> no yeah, there's, way. there's no way of knowing. <laughs> What's so, this guy's deal, Dad? Nicholas, <laughs> my freshman year, your senior year of high school, I, I, I have to give you credit. I'm pretty sure you had like 24 and 14. Yeah. So I will. This is also a lot of fate went into this game as well. So unfortunately, um, it, the Hawks lost Northwestern in the Big Ten tournament, which is the only um, the reason that your dad was at the game and yeah. saw me there. But, yeah, I had three points at halftime, um, finished with 24 and 13, I think. So um, went over the second half, just really wasn't enough, unfortunately. Loved that group of guys. Um, I think we, were undef- we had one loss previous to that. We lost to Davenport Central. But, um, yeah, I – you know, definitely remember that game. Um, remember a uh, Pip Squeak little freshman fouling him, expecting him to miss at the free throw line. Um, but unfortunately, you know, Connor just walked right up and knocked him down. So um, thought we'd had a chance there at the end. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's one that I'll, I'll never get back. Yeah. And my and nothing I in, in addition to you always you know reminded me. My sisters also remind me that neither Michael or I have state championships 
and that they mostly do. So um, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's in my craw for sure. I'm really yeah, glad right? that they yeah. pointed out. That's good. They yeah, got we them, man. Elizabeth was the captain of the state championship volleyball team that Catherine played on. Then she won it the next year. So Catherine's a two-time state champ. She has it on mm-hmm. all of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She holds yeah, the crown. She's, talk about a one-up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, no, seriously though, you mentioned fate. Like my, I remember my dad coming up to me after, after the game, kind of after the fact. You know, we we play well, and you, I mean, you guys were obviously really good. I'm pretty sure you were number one. And we we played some out of state games, so that's why we mm-hmm. met in the, in the semis. Um, yeah. and it was close the whole time, but we had played multiple times, like in the summer, and it, you know, in scrimmages and stuff, and always really good battles. Um, but I remember my dad coming up to me and saying, like, "Yo, like, what do you think about that bear kid?" And I'm like, "I mean, he's pretty good. Like, I mean, he had 24 and 13. He's like, oh, well, you know, I, I kind of like it. What do you think?" I'm like, Man. I think you're onto something. I don't know. I mean, clearly he was. <laughs> That's hilarious. Clearly he was. Yeah. I just remember. What do you think about that bear kid? About that guy. Wait, yeah. You can see. Can you see him saying it? Like I can see. I kind of like him. I can yeah. definitely 100 percent see him coming up to you after the game and that being like one of his first questions. Yeah. I think that really it, it really was. It re- so, like you said, definitely some fate uh, in in that in that game. But it was a, it was a good game. I hit the free throws and then you guys missed and we got the ball back. And mm. then they called a horrible push off foul on me. Probably the right well, call. I think Dylan Sortillo might have sold it a little bit, but I have no wow. Connor McCaffrey to get a little aggressive. Yeah, you know? no, it was so, a flop. I, I, Complete I, flop. <laughs> we're, we're just trying to get the ball in. No. We're up four with like we're up four with like eight seconds. We're just trying to like mm-hmm. get the ball in bounds. The game's over. He takes it off. You gotta expect it. No, Dylan Actually, would never do that. That doesn't sound like Dylan. Never. This is it led to it led to a state championship for me, which I'm obviously grateful for. Not to rub it into you, that's not that's mm-hmm. not why I brought it up. Not why. Yeah. I brought it up. That's exactly yeah, okay. why you brought right. it up. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, it's not. Honestly, not. That was but the we, whole reason that you brought it up. <laughs> um, Nicholas, though, I do want to I do want to go into like I know you, your recruitment. You know, in itself, kind of makes no sense. Um, you know, obviously turned into a turned into a great player but you were you were still good in high school like you were very good and yeah there just wasn't a lot like wasn't a lot going for you and obviously I remember and I want to cover this your your sister being being the the amazing woman that she is storms into the Iowa basketball offices and and tells my dad that he should be recruiting you and I, if you have more details on what happened there, I, I'd love to hear them. Yeah, I mean, she let um, Fran and Kirk Sparrow know that I needed to be a Hawkeye. That's just – that's all – that's pretty much what it was. She let me know after the fact, by the way. So she – like, I'm just in high school. I'm home for lunch. Right? She just came and called and said, hey, by the way, I stopped by the Iowa basketball office and, like, told them that they should, like, look at you. You know, type of thing. I was like – I mean, like, thank – I mean, I guess thanks. Like, I didn't think, you know, that they would, you know – taken into account that much but you know appreciate the gesture for sure um but yeah i mean then high school wise um wasn't super highly recruited had one offer from northwest missouri state with a division two school powerhouse um could have gone there um but i had walk-on opportunities at drake you and i in iowa and it was pretty pretty much a no-brainer um once coach brought me in for an unofficial visit um just kind of sat me down and always wanted to be a hawk type of thing and was really excited about where Iowa was going to the program as well. Um, you know, wanted to be part of that too. So I feel like there was some good momentum there and um, pretty much I think I called him like the next day and he was at an AU tournament. So um, yeah, but loved my time at Bed North, loved being a Bulldog. Um, had some great experiences there with my teammates and everything, but um, you know, really enjoyed getting a chance to start my journey as a Hawk. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. Michael, your, your journey was a little different. Um, than Nicholas's, you know, you, you came on first as, as a manager for the first year, but like, it didn't really feel like that. I, I don't know. You kind of always just seemed like a player to me. Um, I feel maybe it was like, you were always hanging out with us at the dorms. We're obviously same class uh, for everyone. Those of you who don't know, Michael, Austin, Luca, and I all live together. All, I guess you live with Nicholas one year, but every other year. Yeah. You, yeah. you lived uh, at the dorm at Peterson with us and then one year off and then back 
into the house altogether. So we obviously are all very close, but Michael, you coming into, coming into Iowa, obviously you, you wanted to be a, you wanted to be a Hawk and you were, you were in the gym and you're putting your work in. What was that? What was that experience like for you? Oh, uh, I mean, it, it was awesome. Obviously it got me the experience I obviously had in Iowa and the experience I have now, you know, coming out of high school, um, I mean, I, I, I would have had to beg to go play NAIA or something like that. Like I, there was nowhere really to go. Um, I, uh, my, I remember my senior night, the night before my senior night, um, a division three coach who will remain nameless. Um, he, he called me the night before and he's like, Hey, like, I'm going to come watch you play tomorrow, whatever. I'm like, okay, this is the first time a college coach has ever called me. Um, so games the next day, whatever, play fine. Not, not, I mean, play play all right and uh that was the last time i talked to that guy and ne- never heard from him so that, that was uh <laughs> that was Riddle. pretty much how that went so then my senior year ends now i got nowhere to go so i'm like you know I'll, I'll go to iowa at least be a manager be around the program be around my brother um obviously just like obviously like just being from the state and being around the iowa basketball program is a big deal so i definitely cherish that but that first year you know, when you're a manager, you got to be at practice. At practice at three, you got to be there around one thirty, and then it ends. You have TT, clean up after TT. You're at, you're done by about seven thirty eight, and then I would always want to get my own workout in and work on my game. So that's like eight to nine, nine thirty, and then I show back up at the dorm and playing some cards. And you guys are like, "Where, where the heck you been, man?" I'm like, "Well, I got I got to do my own stuff. I can't just be playing euchre all the time." But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much how my freshman year went. And then I was fortunate enough to get the walk-on spot the next year. And, uh, yeah, it was just very special. Michael, you didn't, you didn't grow though. And you're until like, you're, you were not as tall as you are now. You know, yeah. You, you definitely are somebody like Patrick. You both sleep all the time. So, Nicholas, well, you know that. Well, well, <laughs> well, well. The, the kid likes to sleep. And so like when you came out of high school, how tall were you? Out of high school, I was probably six four, six, and I'm about and six seven now. Six three. That's probably six three. Six. So uh, legitimately, I was I was six three one seventy, and now I'm six seven two fifteen. So, yeah. I mean, talk yeah. about a change in your body. Like yeah, that, yeah, a yeah. It's a change from a good player to a really really good. You know that that's a huge. That's everything. Yeah, kind of. Um, you know. You, at the beginning of when we started talking, you kind of mentioned, you know, how Nicholas played whatever, all these different positions. And that's kind of growing up. I was the short guy. So I was always always playing point guard, shooting guard, whatever. And then obviously my body changes and all that. So then even, you know, when I'm playing the post or whatever, I'm kind of looking like, because when I used to be point guard, I'm like pass first guy. So, you know, it's kind of always going to kind of be in my game to kind of look for guys to load up or whatever. So yeah, it definitely helped my development having those skills and then my body growing later. I can attest to Michael's passing ability after playing on scout team for a year. He used to drop. <laughs> uh, he was always the five yeah. man. For whoever we were playing, he was always the five man. And yeah. I know if I made a cut or if I was open on like, like open on the three point line, Mike, Mike was throwing it to me. So that was always yeah, no. I can attest to his passing ability. Mike dropped. That it. was always a problem though because um, you know Nick Ward doesn't. He, he's not loading people up. You know, and I, 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 Isaac Haas isn't like throwing it to the guy in the corner. So like, I, it was kind of I had to start just shooting it. You know, I had to shoot. <laughs> Michael, <was> shooting. <laughs> yeah, I was shooting it. So, you know, Michael, let's get into some scout team stuff, though. I mean, you. Oh God. Oh yeah. One of your, I, I would say one of the, it had to have been an experience for you guarding Luca every single day in practice because uh, I'll I'll start by saying this: he treated you no different than he treated you know, Xavier Tillman on a Tuesday at, Mich- at Michigan State. Like, yeah. you, you might as well have been his tryout to the NBA every day. <laughs> and that's just how Luke is wired. Like, he's just yeah. like – and so, I mean, he's throwing bowls. He might hit you. He's not saying sorry. He's going to talk some shit after he scores on you and one. You know, <laughs> so that's it just what Luca is. And you <laughs> dealt with that every day. Yeah. So uh, one, I do appreciate Austin Ash because he would, he would come to my defense every now and then I'd catch a bow or catch a, you know, Luca would give me a, a bow and then he'd make the layup. And he'd say, and one, it's like, man, you, you're the one who just elbowed me in the nose. Like, come on. <laughs> like, 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 like what, what, what are we doing here? Uh, you know, it, Court, Courtney didn't call the foul. It was out. Uh, what are we doing? Um, but anyway, I think that's the right assessment is that I might as well have been 
Kofi Coburn and whoever. Like that's just how how he's wired. That's obviously why he's a great player. But uh, man, it it was an experience having to be, you know, like I'm six seven and I have to be seven foot one for those the like, scout possessions. And it's just different kind of. It definitely helped my game grow though. I think. Um, Obviously, when I have Luca guarding me seven feet tall, I'm not going to be able to score over him. Got to score around him, stuff like that. So it helped with my footwork and kind of my um, dexterity around the basket, stuff like that. But uh, the scout team's fun. I, Patch, uh, you got uh, everyone here in this on this pod's been on scout team, right? Oh, scout so, team oh, is a blast. So, oh. Yeah, everyone knows about scout team. Uh, I think uh, uh, it, it can be a lot of fun when when you're hitting shots because obviously you want to you know, show up the starters a little bit and make sure, make sure they're ready to go. But uh, I, I definitely had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, no, we've all, we've all been a part, been a part of the, the scout team. I think that that's, that's definitely, it, it, it's huge. It's hugely important. And, and I feel like we've covered it before. We covered it with Austin, you know, every game you're, you got to learn a completely new playbook. And that's it's great. Patrick. That's what Patrick struggles with. Is the, is the, <laughs> yeah, I remember on Ash's podcast, Patrick was talking about Northwestern. Um, I think I think the play was Pacer, and uh, Patrick just high. just, just couldn't get it. Oh, it high, yeah, high. high, yeah. It was just like continuity um, that they ran. It didn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, that, you'll get that, you know. But it's a when it's a Kirk Spiros scout, he's gonna have him scouted inside and out. You better be able to run the three, four, and the five, and be able to do it when he says it. And uh, and run it know, on both but, sides. And, and run it on both sides. You, yeah. Hey, Michael, uh, you're gonna have to run this both sides today. So uh, mm-hmm. hope <laughs> hope you got it. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, what, what do you guys think? Do, do you guys want to stretch or uh, do you think you got it? No, uh, coach, you just gave us 20 plays in like 10 minutes. We're, we're not going to stretch today. We're going to go through the plays. We're going to go through like, it. We're going to go but through that's, Yeah, that's why we love Spru. The guy's always prepared. So My favorite my favorite when we go through him is, is skis where he's like, no shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no shots. And then Ash, uh, if like, I don't know. It was always last year, like Tony might shoot it and Ash would just lose it. So he, he said no shots, Tony. <laughs> come on, come on uh, yeah i mean uh, that's one guy who's i mean the reign of the scout team uh austin ash the last five years i mean he he's just running i, I definitely enjoyed that with him because you know uh last year it was us and then the freshman uh so you definitely feel like you have a leadership role on that end um with the scout team and that's always fun too no, for sure. Now we're gonna go back to Nicholas for a second here. Nicholas, it's kind of a broad question, but what are what are some of your favorite moments as a hawk? Like ones that just really stand out? Yeah, I think one, um probably my from like my freshman year, um, like when we beat Mission State at home, um, number one team at home, sold out crowd. Um, I think for me, like that freshman year, like getting a chance to play, that was to why I decided to come to Iowa was to like play in big games like that on a big stage. Um, I'll remember that game playing well and also Indiana at home later in the year. Um, I hit two back-to-back threes and I'm, I might be a little biased, but that might be the loudest I've heard Carver um, in my time there. Um, but no, that, I mean, those are definitely like some fun memories um, getting put on scholarship for sure. Um, I think I also look back probably my most special year that was definitely my senior year. I think I'm um, getting a chance to obviously share that with Michael. Um, when I think about getting to beat Iowa State at home, that's always you know, something that's important to me um, as an Iowa kid. Um, beating Michigan um, and having that court storming. You know, and I think one thing I always think about is you know, there's a lot of like, and you guys know this too, like there's a lot of unseen hours that people that we put in that, you know, you want to like have some reward or some payoff. And for me, it was those big moments, those, those big games and getting to celebrate um, you know, with my teammates and everything like that. So I'd have to look back on that. Um, and always, you know, goals always to play in March, make a run in the NCAA tournament. Um, so I didn't get a chance to beat Cincinnati. Um, that was definitely something that was, um, I look back on fondly. Um, and also I'm going to go back here, but winning in Madison Square Garden, get a chance to win a championship and think in, um, over in November. Uh, I think that was always something that was, really special kind of getting a chance to, you know, bring back some silverware. Um, that was something that was um, important for me too. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously wish we could have pulled that one out against Tennessee. Thought we had it in us um, in overtime, but um, I think those are definitely a few of like the most special memories that I think of that kind of come to mind when I look back at being a Hawkeye, some of my favorite games or moments 
um, and things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, one that stands out to me for you is, I guess, didn't stand out to me. I was at the game, but we played, I think it was your freshman year. We played Nova in the Barclays Center. Mm-hmm. Right. And we lost. Yep. And, but you played so hard. And I would remember I, that after that season, Luca came on like his first official visit to Iowa. And his dad said to me, like, hey, we, we're going to meet that bear kid. Like, he plays so Frank. hard. Frank. He plays so hard. And I was like, yeah, he does. Like, he's, he's like, no, seriously. Like, he was amazing. Like, against Novello Nova, he's running all over the place. Oh, my God. What? And I'm like, yeah, Frank. Like, that's, that's Frank. That's he's, Frank. <laughs> he's good. Like, and, he, and he's like, that's the kind of kid, like, you got to have on your team. That's what I want Luca to be like. And that, and then, you know, I would say that our my sophomore year, Luca's sophomore year, Michael's sophomore year, when you were a senior, or maybe it was I whatever, whatever. That sounds year, about right. Yeah, Richard. Senior. You definitely, yeah, Richard senior. You were the leader of that team. And you you and TC, you were who we looked up to. And you know, that being as important as it was, you know, what what the year we went 14 and 19. I just feel mm-hmm. like you, you, you know, you got hurt. I didn't, I didn't play. I wasn't really a part of it, but we, we weren't really connected. Like we, we didn't have like a strong leadership force. Like you weren't, I don't know. Like it was just like, we were just as a team, I felt like just something was missing. And then that next year, I just feel like you, re- like you were like the guy, you and TC, you guys stepped up, were big time leaders for Luca, mm-hmm. for me, for um, j for, you know, everybody, Wheezy. Uh, you know, every, everyone. And, it, and I mean, that's, that was ultimately what changed it around. Cause we went from, we went from 14 and 19 to a 23, 24 win tournament team with basically the same personnel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I remember that like my senior year, I did feel like consider like an enormous amount of pressure. Like, you know, obviously just because we went 14, 19 the year before um, that's not how I wanted to go out. You know, I didn't want another, season like that, you know, I wanted to get back and play in March and be competitive and things like that. So, um, I think the one thing that was a little different too, was, um, like I was like the only person from my class there anymore, you know, um, part of that's being an old head and sticking around long enough, you'll be the only one there. But, um, also I just, I kind of felt like, you know, it was my time to step in as a leader. And, you know, even though I wasn't like the most talented player, like I was like the most senior member and, getting a chance to kind of step into that role. Um, so I think that's probably one of the things I'm most proud of is, you know, that my senior season being able to kind of get us back on track and as a program. And I know I had a lot of help. I obviously mentioned TC, you know, people just really leading. And the other thing too is you have to have people who are, you know, want to be led and want to, you know, be able to follow too. And, you know, that's the other half of the equation as well. So um, I'm definitely proud of you know, how I you know, left my career, how I ended it there at Iowa and um, glad we could get back on track. No, absolutely. Absolutely. In your, in your younger years, who, who would you say was the, who would you say was the alpha, the alpha dog, the leader, you know, on those teams with, you know, J.U., uh, Jerry, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Whitey, you played with all the guys. Who, who were, who was the, who was the guy that you got, that you looked up to? Uh, I mean, as a freshman, definitely Whitey um, and Gabe, but they, they kind of led in different ways. Like Whitey was just like, you know, he would just let you know what you needed to do. Like, hey, here's what you got, like, type of thing. Like, he was, like, no fuss, no business. Like, here's what we're doing type of thing. Um, and Gabe was kind of the same way, but he was just, like, he'll pull you aside. Like, Nicholas, like, here's what we're doing. Like, here's where we're going type of thing. Like, he's very, like, more, like, you know, wanted to be kind of like – like, his name was, like, Uncle Gabo. Like, he wanted to be more, like, you know, just kind of like that, you know, fun uncle can give you, like, you know, some good wisdom that way. But um, also I would say, like, Adam Woodbury, Sap um i mean you just you didn't mess with that woodbury man like he would just let you know you know what was going on definitely had that um kind of mentality but you know i think back at iowa like you know a lot of different types of leadership styles you know different different things work um i know that class of you know woody sap ju mike all really close together so they kind of led as a group um type of thing but yeah i mean leadership there's no uh you know one certain way to go about it but when i think back i like those are some of like the bigger personalities that I view, in addition to, I'd also add uh, OK Uka as well, one of my fellow um, walk-ons during my time there as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I was just curious because there, there are so many different, you know, leadership styles and 
who who you learn from might influence you, but you're also going to have you're also going to have some of your own things that that might stick out and some of your own personality traits that are going to come through. You know, you're I, I I loved when you used to yell at us, but you could tell like it's not really your personality. No, right? man, it's like that's just not what like I knew it was like one of those things where it's like I have to do this. So like this is not me. <laughs> like this is not what I'm. But like that's part of leadership too is doing what you're like what kind of makes you uncomfortable. Like for example, like I mean. Adam Woodbury would just like let you know, like very confrontational, like would address, you know, things right away. Um, you know, that wasn't as much my style. My style was more so kind of like, you know, talking like individually type of things. But yeah. at the same time, it's about like setting certain standards. And I thought that you know, just when our you know, standards were slipping, maybe I had to like be a bit more, you know, verbal. I definitely did that, but it wasn't something I was like, all right, let's roll up to practice and crack some heads today and getting people faces. <laughs> like that, that was just not, not my style, but. When sometimes it definitely calls for it, though, especially in competition. Yeah, yeah. No, there's definitely going to be times when you, know, you feel like something something needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick, I, I think I'm, you know, I, I don't ever yell at anyone. No. I don't ever get into it with. with <laughs> Actually, I, I think I don't think you can function without confrontation. Like how Nick tries to avoid it. I think you Whoa. sort of more so embrace it and just like really like it, and you just you. <laughs> You get in a fight every fueled day. Fueled by it. Like, it's just, like, it's just, when I was fueled when, by confrontation. Michael, when I was young, you can confirm this. When I was younger, I definitely was more confrontational because I had people like Nicholas who would be like the nice guys and I didn't have to worry about it. Good now, cop, bad cop. Now I'm like, <laughs> I'm the main guy. So I, I got to be both. Like, I, cause sometimes you still got to bring the fire. Like, you know, we sometimes you gotta get you gotta get guys lit up a little bit, but then you also need to be Uncle Uncle Gabo, and you gotta mm -hmm. take that side. And that's something so that I've mean, learned too. So you're playing both good cop and bad cop now. The I would say on. I'm playing but some good cop, bad cop. This, he's playing a lot of roles, man. A lot of a lot of Ash. sometimes that's what it takes, man. Sometimes yeah. that's what it hey, takes. man. Ash is in on that too. They both kind of do the same thing. And then Jordan is more so bad cop. <laughs> Jordan <laughs> only yells. Jordan uh, only yells. Damn. The good old days when Jordan was good cop. Uh. Jordan's not good cop. <laughs> He's too old for like, that now. <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the center circle, like when we go up for captains before the game, it's me, j -Bo, and Keegan. But, like, Keegan never says a word. So, like, it should be at. Like, That's weird. Keegan doesn't speak up at all ever oh. in practice well, he can only yell at chris otherwise he won't say anything <laughs> otherwise he doesn't say a word it's just it like lights chris up otherwise he won't <laughs> say a word it, it is pretty much like i would say ash is definitely one of the main another main like you guys know that though michael you know yeah that. the guy doesn't shut up yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, guy, the guy doesn't shut up not afraid to be vocal not afraid well, to the be three dead. main voices in the locker room for sure are connor austin and jordan those are the three that pipe up the most Sounds about right. When we're talking about basketball, the, the people that pipe up the most when it's not basketball related is Tony Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about pepperoni Tony? Yeah, talking about Ron? Ron? Job I, actually, I, have, uh, I have a question uh, <laughs> if I could jump in here. Um, so Connor, question for you actually. So Connor and I actually we had a you know pretty important relationship during my time there as like Euro, Euro pitchback partners. Um, oh, I was a big was trailer three. I was like, coming. Connor was always looking for me. I was always, you know, those trailer threes, that was my favorite shot in the game. Big momentum shots. Those are my bread and butter. But I just, I think I'd like to congratulate you. I think you've moved past like the pitch back pass or two. Now you're like the one shooting. You are the one shooting the threes and you're the one open and knocking them down and taking yeah. that spot. How's that, how's that been the last like, you know, few weeks here? What, what do you. Oh, um, trust me. Trust me. We were. We were going to get to the pitch back. Just oh, like, yeah. We were getting to the pitch back. I was going to bring it up. But, yes, the Euro pitch, it was, it was an iconic sequence every game. I mean, you knew it was coming. You couldn't stop it. it no. We would come in in the same rotations a lot of the time. I would be, you know, second. We would come in initially with the second unit, and then you would – I would come out. You would stay in, but I would come out. And, <laughs> but in transition, like I'm finding you, you mm -hmm. go anywhere. It's a good shot for us. It's a good shot for the team. And you consistently made that shot. So, and I've been trying to build people up. Like I've been trying to get Chris into it. Like I, I mm. it's also different when I'm not the point. Like, right. So it's harder. Like a lot of times 
I'll do a lot of pitchback stuff. Like I'll find Jabo. I'll find, I've done a couple of pitchbacks with Peyton. I used to do it with Luca a lot when I would play point at, at, at the end of games um, on, on the, on that team. But I think that, you know, now I've been, Am I the four? Like, am I the that, Yeah, I, I've been I've been shooting him a little bit recently. I try to try to keep that going. He's shooting it. He's shooting, shooting it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been trying to yeah, been heating up a little bit. We'll try to we'll keep it going. I, I, everyone, we're firing on all cylinders right now. Feeling good. We got a big game to big game tomorrow though. We're filming this on Sunday. Um, we play Northwestern on Monday on a senior night. Going to be going to be a big game. Hopefully, you know they're they're really good. You know, their record, they're about 500, but their their record is not indicative of the, t- of the team that they are. As as it is most of the time at the end of the season in a Big Ten year, you know, teams can get mm-hmm. beat up a little bit. And you, the players know how, how good teams are, but a lot of times the fans aren't aren't really tuned into, tuned into what's going on um, with, with who's good and who's not. And that's not their fault. They just, you know, they, they root for the team that, they root for the team that they, they want to win. And so that's, that's what we got going right now. Um, but we're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to episode, I don't even know, of uh, Teed Up. Uh, shout out, Hames Holmes. Oh, it was episode eight of Teed Up. Thanks, Nicholas and Michael. Uh, so shout out, Hames Holmes, providing beauty and comfort in, in your home in eastern Iowa. Uh, Michael, we're coming back to you here. Tell me about the transfer portal. It's kind of something that's sort of run rampant in college sports, specifically basketball and football. Uh, kind of tell us what that experience was like in the portal and kind of what what happened in there. Yeah. So when I first entered the transfer portal this past summer was record numbers for transfers. Like, I, And obviously I was a guy who didn't have a whole lot of game film that the coaches could watch or anything. And it was basically word of mouth was what was going to like – kind of helped me get somewhere. So that's kind of how it went down was I cut up some practice film, some game film. Nicholas was actually helpful in that because he spent the last half of the season as a GA and did some video stuff. Um, So he kind of knew what was going on. So he helped me and we made that video. I basically sent it out to a bunch of coaches, uh, emailing people, following people on Twitter, DMing, kind of stuff like that. I kind of had to take the initiative. And um, luckily, you know, Coach Carm at Siena, actually it was one of his assistants, uh, Antony White, um, it was the one who saw the email, showed it to Carm, and Coach White is now at Notre Dame as an assistant. But anyway, um, Carm, I guess, liked what he saw. And then he gave me a call on a Thursday and set up a Zoom with the whole uh, coaching staff on a Friday. And then I committed on that Saturday. So it was It was pretty crazy because, you you know, there's so much stuff going on. You don't know um, what you're going to get, how it's going to go. And I obviously thought that was going to be a great opportunity for me. So I jumped on it right away. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, pretty quick, pretty quick turnaround of things that happened. Uh, But, you know, I know Coach Carm. I've known Coach Carm since I was, I don't know four years old you dated my aunt <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know um I, like I, I approve you playing for him i know you were looking for my <laughs> approval but i definitely approved my coach i was <laughs> <laughs> michael i remember i remember like once once they offered you or whatever i, re- I remember my dad literally grabbing you like hey like you're calling a commit like now let's go <laughs> so so I, I can tell that story so um insane timeline of events so uh anyway i did the zoom they officially offered me on a friday and it was the morning it was like 11 a.m i had because you, know, you guys know the big 10 policy if you had had covid then you have to do the cardiac mri like i had that set up in like two hours so i'm like all right am i going to new york so i'm in the mri for like two hours and right before I go in, my phone's buzzing, but like I can't check because I'm going in and it says like Fran McCaffrey's calling me. I'm like, what, what the heck is this going to be? So <laughs> I go in, do the MRI for two hours, just thinking to myself, like, am I about to move to New York? What is Coach McCaffrey going to tell me? Like, what's going on? I get out, go to the parking garage, call him. And he gets on the phone. And he's like, this is this is awesome. Like, you, you, like you're going to love it there. 76 Diner, great food. Like, you, 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 you got to go. You got to go. So anyway, I talked to him for like 15, 20 minutes. And then just like weird, like crazy thing. Um, 
I don't know, Connor, we were supposed to like hang out or something or Ash and I were supposed to go pick you up because you had just had hip surgery. And yeah. so we drive out to your house and I had just talked to your dad like an hour before and we have to go in because you can't walk. So we have to like help you get to the car. And I'm in there and I hear your dad like hear his footsteps coming down the stairs and he goes, hey, Michael, uh, I took the liberty of telling Coach Parm that you're going to commit but you just want to talk to your parents first. I was like, <laughs> I was like, S -s sounds about right, man. Um, and then, and then to, to go kind of off that also, the next day, you guys know we had Luca's, there's the spring game, spring football game, honoring Luca with the Naismith Player of the Year Award. And we we're going to have our team banquet after. And again, your dad is like so stoked to tell everybody, like, because I'm going to Siena. And I'm like, well, I better get this tell Carm before he tells Don Doxy. Like I, I got, I got to make sure that, like, this, this gets through. So uh, anyway, um, I call Carm in the morning and he doesn't pick up. And I'm like, Oh geez, whatever. So we're at uh Luca's thing on the field. We're in the back end zone and your dad walks up to me. He goes, is, is it done? And I'm like, no, nah, like he, he didn't pick up and he goes, I'll take care of it. He, he, he and about two minutes later i'm just sitting taking in the scene because we're on like we're in kinnick there's a bunch of fans there and he just he goes hey it's um uh, it's Carm on the phone it's on his phone and so i i take your dad's phone and i'm like hey hey coach like just want you to know like i want to commit whatever and he's like oh like this is awesome blah, blah blah and then i give it back to your dad and that's basically my commitment story and the end zone of kinnick stadium uh a la fran mccaffrey I love when I love when coach goes Uncle Junior mode. Just, just done. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> Mike, is that before or after we were in the end zone and a fan screams from the end zone at Josh Gundelay, "Hey, Josh, you're better than LeBron." <laughs> 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 that, that, that happened before because then I could fully enjoy that moment of Josh being like, you know, maybe I am. Maybe I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Big Jelly for president, right? Isn't that his fan page, um, <laughs> Instagram or whatever? Yeah, they, they love Big Jelly, as so, they should. Mike is a fan favorite. Mike, would you say, would you say my dad was a little too involved in your recruiting process? Or no. What, what's the balance there? <laughs> <laughs> no. I was like, you made a lot of decisions for you. <laughs> No, it was, the thing was like, I, um, I think the reason why he did that, cause it, it was a no brainer. Like I wasn't going to turn that down. Like it was obviously a great opportunity for me, but the reason why when Carm initially offered me, I didn't commit on the spot was because this all happened in a span of like 12 hours. Like I wanted to let my parents in on it a little bit before I been like, yeah, like I'm just going to go to New York. Like, see you, see you guys. Like, um, so I kind of, yeah, so I kind of wanted to let some people know before I officially did it, but um, I think your dad was worried, well, maybe if um, you say no and you hold off too long, they'll get someone else, which obviously I appreciate him looking out for me, and uh, I think it's working out, so I, I appreciated his involvement. Yeah, well, talk to, us about, talk to us about the year and how it's gone for you. You guys are good. You're, you're right in the mix, you know, second or third in a league with I don't know who's, who's good, but you did beat them at home. Games on ESPN, you, Patrick, and I watched. That, that was awesome. awesome. Nicholas watched too, obviously. Oh yeah, great uh -huh. game. Talk to us. Talk to us about how that how the year's been going and uh, the team that you have and your experience so far in Albany. Yeah, so my experience has been great. The team, you know, last year's team had um, Jalen Pickett, player who was the player of the year the year before, obviously at Penn State. Now Manny Camper was the player of the year last year. So you lose two players of the year because he he went and played pro and lost a bunch of stars, a bunch of guys have played a lot. So we have 10 new guys, three freshmen and seven transfers. So the initial part of the season was just getting to know each other, figure out how we're going to play, the style, um, just kind of feel each other out. And um, so we got off to a rough start, but that's kind of the thing in your, the small leagues. We play tough teams at the start. Um, but then once we got into conference play, um, we really kind of hit stride. Obviously, that Iona game was – Awesome. I mean, for the um, Iowa fans who don't really know much about uh, Siena's atmosphere, they have great fan support in the conference. So we get that Iona game brought 6,500 fans, um, which is way more than any other team in the conference gets. Um, obviously it got really loud. It was a huge, huge win. And then we've just been rolling from there. Uh, we won today. We played Monmouth, uh, who we had lost to five days ago at their place. And this win, uh, we're tied in second with St. Peter's. 
And as long as we win out, we control our own destiny. We'll have that second place locked up, which is big going into the conference tournament. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're real excited about it. And the end of the day, in the one bid league, you just got to win three games in March. Like anyone's got a shot at it. So um, but, but that's what's fun. Michael, can you explain why that like top two seed is really important, specifically in the MAC? Yeah. So they, um, the way it works is the first two seeds get a day off. So we'd play on Wednesday and then we get Thursday off and then play Friday, Saturday um, for the championship. Whereas if you're any other seed, you're going to have to play Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So three days in a row. So it's big to have the two seed, which is what we're um, in the hunt for right now. And we have the inside track. We go uh, to Canisius and Niagara, uh, play Niagara on Thursday, Canisius on Saturday, and then we get ready to go to Atlantic City and uh, for the conference tournament. So, yeah. The Buffalo Swing is one of my favorite trips because we ate a good food, good food spot. Oh, we got good food. Well, yeah, so Carm was your dad's dobo. So he, I think most of the food spots are the same. I think we're, we're eating a lot of, <laughs> a lot of the same places. We're so, really uh, Italian. yeah. Some great yeah. Italian food. <laughs> yeah, we have, uh, it's pretty much the same. We have chicken parm on the road trips, you know, the night before. Like, it's pretty much, that's the staple, um, which was also a Fran McCaffrey staple. So, yeah. Um, not too different on that front <laughs> definitely not Carmen Masciarello like that's you know yeah I mean so we actually we're going to our foreign trip is to Italy this summer believe it or not he decided to take us to Italy um which I <laughs> which uh and our assistant coach Bobby Castagna uh they're, they're very <laughs> stoked about about the Italy trip um we got family but, ties over there what are you talking about they got family yeah, ties yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah exactly so we're gonna hit all the spots um no, I'm really excited about that this summer. Uh, it might cut into my time that I get to spend in Iowa City, you know, hanging out with you guys. But, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited about it. Talk to me a little bit about Albany and what it's been like living there. How have you, how have you enjoyed that? Yeah, um, I, I've enjoyed it. For the most part, you know, I kind of just – I'm going from my apartment to uh, Sienna's campus, just kind of hanging out there. I've, I've hit a few of the food spots. You know, we, we hit up Bellini's counter. Um, obviously, you know, the 76, Latham 76 diner. Uh, kind of, that was the first place you kind of told me about. Had, had that a few times. Um, but for, for the most part, I'm just, I'm just enjoying it. Um, yeah, I just kind of do, do my schoolwork, go to campus, hang out. Um, it's a small campus. It's only 3,200 students. Um, so that's obviously a big change for me coming from a big university. But that also at the same time, like, it's a uh, – very interactive a lot of people know everybody like our the school president president gibson is like all in knows it knows everybody just very fired up like it's, it's kind of like one of those things where you kind of see everybody day to day and you enjoy that so yeah i'm liking it there good good well i mean you you have an excuse because you live in new york but it, it's almost as if nicholas like thinks he lives in new york too because we i see you about as much as I see Nicholas. And that that's just the bottom line. Whether it's practice, whether it's game, the guy just is, he just likes to avoid seeing me. I don't know, maybe it's my face. I don't know. Nicholas, do you, you have, any, do you have, have an answer? Me, the the uncomfortable, well, the uncomfortable thing big is, growth. maybe this is by design. That's what we don't want to admit. Um, right. You know, that's exactly. what, the, that was, you know, the elephant in the room. But no, I, I think that's, I don't think that's fair. I've been like the last four or five games, stop by practice, um, can't, coming to senior night tomorrow for sure. Um, but yeah, no, I've enjoyed being in Iowa City, getting a chance to go to the, you know, different Iowa games, obviously this year. And it's been a lot of fun, especially these last few ones um, with a you know pretty packed Carver and get a chance to see Lucas, Lucas, uh, you know, recognition and seeing that big win. So um, definitely been enjoying uh, getting a chance to be in Carver Hawkeye Arena any chance I can. So there. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> last question. Last question for both of you. Um, obviously, this team that Patrick and I are on got a lot of hate you coming into the year. Not hate, but we not a lot of believers. I'll say that. You know, that nobody thought we were going to be any good. Um, you both obviously had the inside track. What what did you, Nicholas, we'll start with you. And then, Michael, I want your thoughts as well. What did you think we could be? Did you think we were going to be good, honestly? Did you expect, you know, this, how we're playing? Did you expect worse? Did you expect better? What were 
what were your thoughts on this team and the the players that we had? What did, what were what did you think going in? Yeah, I mean, I originally going into the year, I thought you guys were a tournament team. Um, I wasn't sure. You know, I thought it would be pretty close, honestly, coming down the stretch. Um, doesn't appear to be that way at the moment, um, which is, you know, obviously great. Um, I was, obviously, we all knew Keegan was going to have to take a big step um, this year and kind of be, you know, a focal point, big guy. And, I mean, he's stepped up to the challenge, which I think getting a chance to see him, obviously, we saw it in games last year. But I think for me, also getting a chance to see it in practice every day, I didn't have any doubts about that. Um, so I think that was something that, um, you know, I was happy to see. My only, you know, kind of question just kind of going in was about in terms of size. I, you know, I knew Philip was coming in, but I really didn't have, you know, seen any of his game. Um, but I think Jordan coming back was huge. You know, I think that was important as well. But um, I mean, I feel like it's kind of the same story every year, though. Like we're always kind of, you know, projected towards, you know, the bottom of the Big Ten. And then we always kind of outperform where our um, preseason rankings are. So um, I think, you know, it's more of a testament to, you know, how, you know, what our process is throughout the whole year and, you're really glad to see that you guys are playing your best basketball right now. Michael, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I think the one thing I knew was that Keegan Murray was really, really good. Like, and obviously like that's, he's, he's played great and uh, he's just, he's so confident. He doesn't rattle at all. So I didn't think he would have a problem stepping into like the limelight kind of, and he's obviously been playing really well. The one thing I, I guess because we lost so much scoring from last year was, well, okay, Keegan's going to have to step up. Patrick's going to have to step up, you know, um, score more points. And I was like, let's see if they can get it done. And that's all, that's a testament to how you guys have played and all that, but also like how coach has been able to put guys in the right spots and just kind of, you know, you guys run the free flowing offense and uh, get guys the looks that they want. And um, obviously we knew we, at least we thought we'd have a, a good defensive team also. Um, and we were able to do that too. So no, you guys are very fun to watch. Um, that, that's what I always enjoy. And then like Nicholas said, like it's not really a bubble situation at all. You guys have had some big wins here in the last couple of weeks. They're just kind of locking it up. Do you watch every game, Michael? I watch every game that I can. You know, I like the, Mich I was so upset. The Michigan state game, Luca's um, Jersey retirement. I, we had a game the exact same time. So like I, I couldn't watch that at all. Uh, one thing I was doing, if I um, uh, if I couldn't see the game, I would I have my synergy account, so I'd go on. Especially if Ash got in late game, you know, I, I definitely got to go check out Ash's shots that he's chucking up. Um, so I, I would definitely do that <laughs> if I couldn't watch the game live. So uh, so yeah, no, every game that I can, yeah, I watch. Okay, good. I'm just making sure. Just making sure. Oh uh, yeah, um, don't worry about me, boss. <laughs> right. Next. Nicholas. Talk about the G League a little bit. I'm actually curious, like, because, mm -hmm. like, you hear stories about, like, how the G League can be, like, kind of nuts and, like, you know, just, like, everything is kind of, like, there's, like, nothing is set in stone ever in the G League. So just kind of, I don't know, just speak to your experience. that You played in it. So just kind of speak yeah. to your experience in the G League for a little bit. Sure. So, yeah, I played in the G League with the Raptors 905. Yes. That's how our PA announcer always say it every game. That's how I always remember it. But um, really enjoyed my time up there. Um, kind of came together a little bit last minute as I was trying to um, know what my options playing professionally, but loved it. Uh, ran a really good organization. But there's the thing about the G League, um, there's always a lot of change. You got to be willing to adapt. I remember I was kind of earlier in the year, I played one of my better games. I was four for four from three, huge part of a comeback win on the road. Um, and then next game, the Raptors set down four guys and I don't play at all. And you just got to be able to kind of be like a professional about it and understand it's not personal and you can't you know, slouch or you can't, you know, be upset, that type of thing, because they'll, they'll cut you, you know, they'll, they'll trade you, they'll get you a new home. And I think there were, so there's 13 spots on our team. Um, and I had a total of like 25 teammates, just guys getting sent up, guys getting cut, guys getting traded. Like literally like we, like you just don't know until tip off like who's on your team or like who's gonna be starting <laughs> like we literally like we would we traded two guys the guys like warmed up and then like we came out to like kind of like our last warm-up and one of our starters just didn't didn't come out and he got traded um to like a different team and now all of a sudden which you, that's why you got to be ready for every game because like all of a sudden you know like i was gone and i went from pl playing probably like 10 minutes now i'm playing 20 25 because that guy left so um, but I mean, you got, always got to be ready. Um, I think the one thing to always remember about the G league too, is like, 
no one really wants to be there. Um, <laughs> I, like, was, like, I know that the G League's reps, like, grown a little bit, but, like, everyone wants to be there in the NBA or playing, like, at a higher level overseas. Like, it's not the final destination for people. So understanding that and just kind of going in with that mindset and understanding that everyone's got their own mission in mind, but you got to be as professional as possible. Otherwise, um, you'll have an early exit for sure. You, you, that, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Talk to teammates in a year. <laughs> well, yeah, to get there before the game. <laughs> right, trade it before the game. Like, I mean, that's just kind of like how it was, just because, like, as much as it's like a developmental league, like, we're, it's still professional basketball. Like, it, we're still trying to win. People are trying to make money. People are trying to, like, make that next contract or, you know, get a 10 day, whatever it is. Everyone's got different ambitions. But, um, you know, I think the biggest thing was just learning how to, like, you got to be a pro about it. You can't take things super personally and take your slice of humble pie when it comes your way and just be ready for your next opportunity. And, and coffee black changes teams at halftime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't just go flying through the air like that, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> the alley-oop. <laughs> Sounds like a plot to semi-pro two. <laughs> the semi-pro two. Semi-pro <laughs> two. Guys switching. To, I love it though. I love it. Good question, mm-hmm. Patrick. Uh, all right, let's do the draft now. Let's do the draft. We are drafting travel destinations slash vacation destinations, um, any kind of event that, like, you would want to go to in, a, in another place. Can be in the U.S., but can be, obviously, anywhere anywhere in the world. There are no, no limits. We're going to go Michael, first pick. Then we'll go Nicholas. Then we'll go Patrick. Then me. We'll snake it back. We each get five. I cool. have an insane pick, by the way. Uh, well, oh, tr- trust me, I have I'm on the edge of my seat so, now. So, I'm, so, I'm ready to pass. <laughs> um, I don't know All if right, I like Michael, the pressure of the first pick. Right, uh, um, I, okay. Um, you know, one thing I really want to do is I want to go to Rio de Janeiro for Carnival. That, that's that's oh. what I want. I want. I want to go to Carnival in Rio. <laughs> what a yeah. pick! Can, you, can, you, say, can you say a little more? Like what? I have, I've, as long as I've known you, I've never heard of you having a desire to go to Rio de Janeiro. This is the first time I've ever heard of this. <laughs> so, 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 so here's the thing. I, um, I don't really like, I, I pretty much have a good time wherever I'm going to go. So like, I've never really thought about like, oh, I really want to go to this spot. And Nicholas, you know, I'm not a beach guy. Like I'm not, Mm-mm. I think a lot of people like want, yeah, like I'm not a beach guy. I don't care. Nope. So I went, um, number. I don't. Dude, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to burn. Like, what, that, what? I don't want that. Um, but uh, I don't know. Something about Carnival, just like some huge party, like the whole town's in on it. I, the whole city, like, it's crazy, man. Rio? You've seen the movie? Like, it, it's great. The yeah. movie's so sick. <laughs> okay. Wow. Shout out Rio. Fast Five, too. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Nicholas, Nicholas, go ahead. Uh, so my number one trip that I have marked that I'm definitely gonna, going to complete is to go to Anfield in Liverpool to watch my favorite soccer team, Liverpool Football Club. Um, by the way, they won the Carabao Cup today. Um, so we have one title already this season. But I'm a huge soccer fan, huge Premier League fan and an even bigger Liverpool fan. So um, definitely on my bucket list to get a chance to go watch a home game there um, with all my Liverpool supporters, get a chance to see um you know game there at Anfield and seeing you'll never walk alone so that's definitely on my buck yeah I that I'm gonna have goosebumps and probably cry honestly so I was gonna say um, are you gonna cry are you gonna cry yes yep yeah yep 100 percent 100 percent so <laughs> that uh that's that's top one of uh, place I want to go for sure yeah pick. can't argue with the pick I I was gonna, I was gonna move myself ahead of you in the draft so I could take that first. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I would never. <laughs> Thanks. I know, I know that's yours. All right, mm-hmm. Patrick, go. All right, my first pick. This isn't the insane pick, but my first pick is Dubai. I just think Dubai would be so sick. They have so many cool buildings, so much money, so much technology. I want to go to Dubai. All right. All right. Fair. Fair. All right. Well, I'm kind of on the same path as Nicholas in this, in this, I guess. I want to go to, I've never been to Paris. So I want to go to Paris on a vacation. But while I'm there, I also want to go to a PSG game. Oh, nice. That, yeah. is, that is my number one overall pick. But I've never been to France. 
and I, I knew, yeah, you have. We were there. I mean, Connor, that's I, just not true. That's just right. not true. <laughs> we, 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 like, that's just not. I had a crepe with you in France. Like, that's just not true. You're right. You're right. I, I've never been to France. <laughs> I, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. All right. Good point. Good point. I've been to France, but not Paris. Fair. That's true. That's true. So, that's true. PSG game in Paris. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my second pick is going to be I'm, I'm just taking I'm, – I'm not going to use the soccer portion because you already did this, but I've never been to, I've never been to London. So mm. I, I want to go to, to London, um, you know, honestly, anywhere in England, you know, whether Manchester – it doesn't matter, really. Well, no, mm. no. Not, to Jelly, it matters. You stay away from South London. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Jelly says, says don't go to South, South London. London. <laughs> <laughs> he did say that. But I've never, I've never been there, and I really, and I really want to go. So that those are my, those are my first two picks. Patrick, back to you. All right, um, my second pick. I'm gonna save my insane pick for my last one. So I'll All leave right. that right now. So my fifth pick is gonna be insane. So be ready. This is pick two. Um, you know, this is kind of I think a generic answer. I'm just gonna go Hawaii. Like I just think Hawaii is cool. You know, go mess around with the volcanoes. Um, just go with it. It's one of my favorite movies. And, you know, uh, that takes place in Hawaii. So, you know, maybe maybe I'll find Jennifer Aniston there or Brooklyn Day or somebody, you know. Might be there. They could be there in theory. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with Hawaii. Swim with the Dolphins maybe like they do in that movie. Of course. Great movie. Great movie. Love great movie. movie. Back Might to me. For a while, but it's going to – the pod's going to end before we would be done. So. Mm. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Nicholas, uh, just one place I really want to go is Greece. Um, mm. Would love to go there, um, both on just like a like a vacation type thing, but also just get, get a chance to like tour, get a chance to see all that. So that's definitely um, the number two on my list. So, yeah, it's a great pick. Nope. All right, thanks, thanks guys. Um, um, my, I got back to back. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go with. I want to go to Egypt. I want to see the pyramids. I want to, you know, it's just crazy. These people made these pyramids with no help. Maybe the aliens, who knows? But like, um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Who, who, no. Who I, was, I, I wasn't there. Um, but uh, yeah, so Egypt to see the pyramids. And then th- there's a lot that's like a few places I'd like to go, I, I guess. Uh, maybe like the Swiss Alps, you know, I hear, I hear it's beautiful, you know, nice area. I see the mountains and everything. I think that would be a beautiful place to go to. So Wait, I guess Swiss there? Alps. Were we there? Again, I wasn't. So oh, maybe sure. you were. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So back to me then I have the yeah, next one. All right. So as many of you on this pod know, I am a huge Harry Potter fan. Um, so I have been to Harry Potter world in Orlando, but I would like to visit the Harry Potter set in London actually. So I'm going to pretty much do a England trip and go to London, see the Harry Potter film sets, and then also go up to uh, Liverpool. So that's, uh, that's my third overall pick. You took it from me, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. we it's can share it. It's okay. It's a good pick. It's a great All right, I had a pick. I forgot it. So I'm just going to talk here for a second and see if it comes back to my brain. Um, <laughs> what pick? Was, oh, oh, Bora Bora. Oh, yeah. Everything's like on the water. Yeah, Bora Bora. They got like yeah. huts and stuff. You know, I, I think that would be a cool place. <laughs> All right. Bora Bora. I want to go to I, – I have two picks here. Yep. Um, my first pick is going to be Barcelona. Because mm-hmm. of everyone who goes to Spain says that like Barcelona is amazing, and w- apparently we're gonna go there this. I think it's this Europe trip if we go. I think it's that. Um, but that that's one that I like. I really wanna. I really wanna go see is be, be in Spain. I've never been to Spain. We covered a lot of places on the Europe trip, but. I want to go to Barcelona. Um, and then my next pick is going to be Florence, Italy. That's Ooh, my, why Florence? Yeah. I don't know. I, I like, I just, he's I did bougie. a podcast. That's why, because he's bougie. He, he's got designer bags, so he thinks he's bougie. No. <laughs> That's why he wants to go to Florence. 
I did a project yeah. on Florence and like it's art in high school and I've just wanted to go ever since then. So that's oh, so you're a big art guy now. Okay. <laughs> it's not about the art. That's what the project was about. But like, man, the guy all of a sudden cares about art. Since yeah, when? This guy, <laughs> this guy just wants to see the David. Yeah. Um, but no, kind exactly. of we're, our trip, we're going to Florence this summer. So I'll send you Did pictures you? and as if you might actually be there. I'll, I'll FaceTime you so you yeah. can. Thank you. you can be. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually reading a book right now um, called This Guy uh, Reads Inferno, is which is off of the. <laughs> what a nerd. Sorry. <laughs> What's this guy's um, deal? <laughs> all right. Yep. Okay. Everybody got their jokes out. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, no, but I'm actually reading a book right now called Inferno, which is based it's like a mystery thriller novel. Same guy who wrote The Division Code, based off of like they're going through Florence and everything. So I would definitely suggest reading that, like just kind of if you want to have a better idea about what you're looking at when you go but small plug in there um cool patrick i think it's yeah. back to you yeah back to patrick, me back to you. can i pick places i've already been and want to go back to yeah i'll allow it okay vegas i won <laughs> oh, I in vegas i won like you got me sold i won 1300 bucks mike let's go after the season i'm in i won 1300 bucks right. the last time i want to go back and double Twi- it. twist my arm patrick oh <laughs> I, I, might, I might i might look into it <laughs> No, mine's a no-brainer, Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Nicholas, to you. I am going to go with a World Cup. I want to go um, visit a World Cup. I know there's, I know it's coming to the United States here in 2026, but I would love to go like visit one and like I think just seeing like all the different countries and like how passionate people are about that. Like, I think that would definitely be something that is very oh, high yeah. on my list. I feel like you got to go to one not in the U.S. I think Correct. That would be way cooler. I don't want oh, just a road trip to Chicago like for yeah. a game. No. So you, know. you want to go to Qatar next year? No, I will not make it to Qatar. You want to go to, oh, you're not going to make it to Qatar? Oh, no. <laughs> not this All year. right. So, so some far off. It's a, it's, a, it's a 2030. It's a 2030 thing. Oh, okay. I, I hear you. Yeah. Um, is it to me? It is. Michael, um, you're too. All right, so these are my final two? Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, Got a lot here. I, I'm not sure. I, I think I'm going to go to simply for the experience. Like, I think just, I don't even know what goes on, but I just want to, um, I'm going to go Amsterdam for my fourth. I, I think, I don't know. Amsterdam sounds like a crazy time. Um, Amsterdam and then the last in, in one, New York? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Amsterdam, in, 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 Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Okay. That, that Amsterdam. Um, just to make it clear. And then my fifth one, kind of out there, but I think it would be one one hell of a time. As I want to go to Germany for Oktoberfest. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Going for Oktoberfest, Nicholas. You speak a little German, so maybe you you can come. I along. I would need to brush up on. It. I haven't spoken it in many moons, but yes, I did okay. in high school. So. All right. Um, okay, so it's my, I have the last one here. Yes. Okay, so mine, I have never been to New Orleans. Um, and I'd like to go this year, actually, to watch the Hawks and the Saints in the Final Four. So um, that's my plan here um, over the coming months. Nice. That's a great plan. Very I love nice. that plan. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it. I would be so happy. As long as you guys are game. So we'll see. I was, I was going to say I would feel confident in that game, but, like, at that point, if Sienna's in the Final Four, like, Something's working. Yeah, yeah we're off. Something's high. going. You guys are on yeah. fire. So we're in their threes. Yeah. We'd be yeah. screwed. Just got to start hitting your threes. That's all it comes down to. All all right, so this, is my, this is my last pick. I've been oh, talking insane about my pick. Last pick. Okay, so this is only – this pick has an asterisk by it. The asterisk is I need to be able to come back. But, so North Korea, I think that will be a good place to see. Oh, <laughs> I have to be able to come back. You know, they, they I can't go there and get stuck. So, the, so well, said, like, what was what's the appeal? Yeah, what do you want to the do? The fact there? that nobody really knows what the hell goes on there. <laughs> that, that's the appeal. So, you really go, go. so North Korea over like Area Fifty One, over like not knowing what goes on there. Yeah, no, no, Area Fifty One. That's no, 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 no. Okay, okay. No, no, North Korea. Uh, Sorry, Just because nobody knows what's going on there. There's no, <laughs> no phones. Like, it, 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 I don't even know what they got going on there. But, you know, I, I think that would be a cool place to go. But I have to be able to come back. So make sure kind of when you tweet this draft that they know that I have to be able to go back. Oh, Asterisk, yes. Yeah. All right. For my last pick, I'm going Johannesburg, South Africa. 
Okay. My, my mom went on a trip there and I seen I've seen pictures and it seems like a very, very cool place. Although I'm not huge on the flight time, but that's okay. Yeah, that's gonna so, be a hike. You can get over it. But yeah. I'm going I'm going South Africa. That was my cool. that was my final pick. Yeah, man. Awesome. Johannesburg, South Africa, you know, birthplace of Steve Nash. Yeah. Uh-huh. And there he is. There he is. There, there he is. is. <laughs> Random fact, man. He's, He's back. back. <laughs> it's unbelievable. The more you know. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to hope you hope you guys know that now. You can use that in a trivia game now. I feel like I feel like we've all there, there's too many places in the world to go. No one had a bad draft. Like if we're being honest. I mean I picked North Korea. I think that's I don't know, North oh, Korea, that <laughs> I don't know. That's a little insane. It's a little insane. Slightly. Yeah. But that was fun though. It was a good draft. Yeah. And that will be it for this episode. Fellas, Michael, Nicholas, thank you so much for, for joining us. This was this was fun. I feel like we could definitely keep it going. Um we we could probably just fill it up talking, but I know you guys got stuff to do. I got I got a paper. I got to type. So I'll, I'll get on that. But thank you guys for joining us. This was this was really fun. I loved this episode. Yeah, thanks for having us, man. Best of luck to both of you. Go Hawks. Go Saints. Looking forward to watching you both teams coming up here and in, into March. Yeah, I love the Saints. All right. Yeah, Saints are sick. Hawks are sick. Am I right? <laughs> yep. Double sick. He's right. He's right. All right. That. That is it for this episode. I want to shout out Hames Homes. Um, they provide beauty and comfort and homes in, in Eastern Iowa. Again, thank you guys. And we will see you with our next episode, episode nine. Thank you.